Welcome. I want to review lordosis and hyperlordosis. What is it? And how this is relevant to what is happening within your body, how you're feeling um, biomechanically, what's happening, how are other muscles being uh, included with this uh, particular change. So a lot of people are getting confused with these terms because you're getting a lot of videos you're seeing maybe through the internet and you're not really understanding the factual things behind it. But I'm going to explain it to you very simple. There are two lordotic curves in the, in the spine. The cervical lordotic curve, the cervical lordosis, it's an inward C-shaped curve. And then you have what they call a kyphotic curve, a normal kyphotic curve, which is the mid-thoracic and thoracic spine. And then the lower back, you have the lordotic curve again. For our sake, I want to talk about primarily the lower back because we're going to touch uh, on briefly on anterior pelvic tilt. And I'm going to defer you and leave the link below. And I want you to go to that link if you have not seen my video on anterior pelvic tilt. It's quite comprehensive, but it's going to show you everything. It's going to teach you how to correct it it's going to explain all the exercises. It's going to explain the biomechanics, the physiology, the anatomy, something you're going to love to see. But for this particular short video, lordosis is this normal lumbar curve in the lower back, which is good. Hyperlordosis means it became hyper more, more accentuated. Now it's more curved. And generally, if you look at this model here, you can look at the iliopsoas muscles, the hip flexors. That is the reason why contracture of the iliopsoas and the iliacus muscle contracting down, squeezing down. And not only does that increase the lordotic curve, but what happens is you get more compression on the back of the facet joints. These joints right here where the vertebrae sit on, those are called facet joints. And as those joints become more compressed inwards like this, you then can get inflammation or facet imbrication. And that means that those areas on the joints in itself are very, very, very pain sensitive. So now a person who has this hyperlordosis from anterior pelvic tilt, from the, from the contraction down of those iliopsoas muscles, now you may be having radicular pain going down the leg, causing inflammation in the sciatic nerve in the buttocks down the leg, burning, tangling, numbness, or pain into the front of the groin or on the outside of the leg because those facet joints, if you look here, those facet joints, when they become inflamed, that's right around the area where the nerves exit as well. You can actually get referred pain from those facet joints to different areas in the body. So I want to bring this information, this, va this very important information, because you can have radiating pain and it could be not related to a disc at all. So, you know, many uh, surgeons out there, medical physicians out there, and neurologists will look at the, an MRI and say, oh, you have a herniated disc, we need to do surgery. It may not be coming from the disc at all because this is very very common as a result of those facet joints called facet syndrome. I hope this has given you some input, some good advice. I hope it helps you. I ask you to uh, share this video with others. Subscribe if you haven't so you can continue to receive the best of the self-help videos here on the internet. And most important, make it a great day. I'm Dr. Alan Mandel.